Dave Reynolds Garage. Uh, we have our crew back for this very special shoot we're doing today. Uh, two really exciting cars. This one here is the Mustang Mach-E 4X. This is the electric Mustang you've heard about. This is the road version. And this is the Mach-E 1400, 1400 horsepower. Believe me, if there are any myths about electric cars being slow or whatever, believe me, this will vanquish them fairly quickly. You know, the nice thing about being an old guy is you get to know these uh, CEOs from the auto companies before they were CEOs, you know, and they were just car guys. And this gentleman is a true car guy. I am so excited. He's the new president and CEO of Ford. Uh, Jim Farley. Jim, come on in. Good to see you, my old friend. Great to be here, oh, Jay. Great really to be exciting. here. Really exciting. And, you know, usually in the old days when you talk to the head of a car company, well, I came from Whirlpool, then I was with Maytag for a number of years, and then I was selling uh, TVs for Zenith. But almost all the car companies out have guys like yourself, real car guys yeah. that are out testing the stuff, running it. I know you race every weekend. You yep. race uh, a 1966 a GT40, one yep. of the greatest cars of all time. Yep. So tell us what we have here. I know a little about, about the Mach-E. I drove it at a preview. You just Elba was there. Oh, and, yep. Yeah, and that, yep. was, that was exciting. We ran out on the parking yep. lot. It was fast. It yep. handled. This is not the GT model. This is the regular model, yep. right? Yep. This goes on sale basically now, Jay. And, uh, yeah, we're really excited about it. We have the Bronco coming. We have the new F-150. And we have this new Mustang Mach-E. This is the first all brand new bottom-up electric car from Ford. Yeah, I mean, the, the exciting part to me is the fact that I see a lot of manufacturers, a lot of the European manufacturers have taken their standard model, yep. chassis, wheels, tires, taken out the internal combustion engine and adapted it to electric. And usually the engine sits way high in the front and yep. it, it doesn't quite, but this yep. is a totally electric platform, doesn't share anything with the gas car at all. That is, yeah, we started about four years ago with a ground up vehicle. Our idea was we didn't want to create a commodity product. We wanted to put emotion into electric vehicles. And that's why we started with a Mustang. A lot of our Mustang customers, you know, the best selling sports car in the U.S. for a long time, uh, they want more space. And uh, they also want to go into the future. So almost 300 miles of range. It's so much fun, though. It's got a lot of Detroit swagger. And, you know, I, I noticed when, when they first came out with it, Mustang, hey, wait, what Mustang is supposed to be, you know, like the Corvette guys when they got rid of the round tail lights. Hey, what are you doing? There's a round tail. You know, you, you become a slave to tradition, kind of like 911. Yeah. If they ever make a car that doesn't look like a 911, oh my yeah. God, they're in trouble, you yeah. know. But I like the fact that you're willing to take a chance and just try something totally new. Because I, And I kind of like now that it's a Mustang, because now I know it's got a performance background. It, it was called the... Electro 2000, <laughs> it would just be another car, is it made in China, whatever. You know, this, it's a Mustang, you know, it's American made, you know, the yep. whole deal. Very cool. And Very the cool thing about it is, we still have the V8 coupe, so right. you want that and you want this together, you have a great combination. In fact, in many ways, the Mustang Mach-E really allows us to make the V8 for many, many years to come. Right, and this is, I guess, I, I used to call them station wet. Now it's a crossover. Yes, yes. Right? Seats fold yep. down, you got all kinds That's of room it. in the yep. back. Okay. Yep. And of course, you probably have a lot more room than an internal combustion because you got batteries in the flat floor, yep. correct? Okay. That's right. And uh, also, you know, you don't have all the engine and the HVAC equipment all compressed together, so you have more room inside. There's, it's kind of like you're basically the next class up in, ter in terms of interior room in these electric vehicles, if they're ground up electric platforms. You know, here in California, it's pretty progressive. So yep. electric is always oh, the new thing. Yep. You know, I travel other parts of the country. Ah, well, they're electric. They don't know about that electric thing. They don't, that, that's a golf car. I mean, they, don't, they can't seem to get it out of their head because electric yep. cars used to be slow. Yeah. I mean, yep. there was a guy who made a, an electric car, kind of a homemade deal. But he would go to the drag strip and just blow off everybody. People are like, well, what? it's just an anomaly. Like, it's not even possible. It's, it's a one-off. It couldn't possibly. And then when the Prius came out, that had a reputation of yep. being sluggish and whatever. Yep. And, that, that, that. Uh, and then Tesla came along. That helped to change it. And of course, <laughs> this one, I imagine, with 1,400 horsepower. And that's, <laughs> I, I know it's hard to measure horsepower electric versus yep. internal combustion. But it's the torque that's the killer. Exactly. So, you know, think about this car. Everyone loves a bullet Mustang. Right. This has more torque than the bullet Mustang. Right. So that 
To your point, the electric motors have so much torque, it's instantaneous. The GT version of this car is going to have over 600 foot-pounds of torque. So they are fun to drive. It's great for to kind of extend the, the Mustang brand in a way, but it's got to be a Mustang. It's got to be a Mustang. Right. And it's funny to be in this, because this is a bit like being a blacksmith in about 1912. Mm. You know, the writing's on the wall. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to fix cars sooner or later. Mm -hmm. You can keep making horseshoes if you want, yeah. but you have to have an area where you can work on cars. Yep. And Because, uh, you know, I think steam ran everything from about 1800 to about 1911, then internal combustion 1911 till now. And now, I mean, if a kid is born today, this is most likely what he'll first drive when he's 16 or 17 yep. or whatever it might be. It's, it's just a great new technology. You know, the car industry always changes. Sometimes it feels like it's moving slow and then all of a sudden it doesn't move slow. And, you know, for us in the car business, even an old school executive like me who spent their whole career working in internal combustion engines, it's got more interior room, less parts. The parts that you're eliminating are the ones that break. Right. Uh, you know, you have great design flexibility. You can put the tires on the outside of, of the vehicle. It looks great. We can have larger diameter tires. It's so much more flexible yeah. uh, as a platform. Because for new technology to exceed, it can't be equal. It's got to be superior. That's right. I remember when the Wankel engine came out, mm. everybody thought that was going to be the great savior. Every mm. car company uh, bought a, a Wankel yeah. license. And then they found out, oh, they tend to use oil and they don't get as good a mileage, usually two to four miles per gallon less Got it. Not, not per gallon. Yeah, I guess per gallon than, than the uh, internal combustion equivalent. So although they were popular, Mazda had them and a few other yep. people tried them, it, could, it didn't quite get there. And electric, I, I remember I had an EV1 for a while, mm -hmm. and I thought it was great, but it had a range of 80 miles. And I would leave my uh, work to go to NBC, and I would step on it, and I'd see 80, oh, 20. <laughs> well, do I have 20, or yeah. do I really have 20? Yeah. I only got 20 miles left, and then it would creep back up to a 70. Uh, and I would, I was, when I get the, oh, I'd be sweating bullets. I'd plug it in, and I had just enough power to get home. I probably right. had more. Right. And that was always the thing. Now with the range problem, it's exactly the same as a full tank of gas, yeah. if not better. It is. Yeah. So you hit the nail on the head. When we got beyond 250 miles that started to be really comfortable with people. We have 14,000 chargers available across the United States, so we have a great charging network now. But you're right, we're on kind of the other side of that invisible line where you can really live with these vehicles every day. And the fun part is, all the big car companies, you, GM, Chrysler, Fiat, whatever they're called now, mm -hmm. they're all run by engineers. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the great part of it. Because I remember when electric cars started to come out, people said, oh, when the Germans get involved, mm -hmm. uh, that'll put all the American guys, but it's not. Mm -hmm. I've seen some of those. They don't have the range that we have. Yeah. So, I mean, we do, when we apply ourselves, like it's like me in school, Jay has the ability, but does not apply himself. That was my, that was my motto when Whoa. I was in school. And it, it's fun to see so many engineers working on a project as opposed to, you know, the old days of a GT stripe and, a, you know, some sort of cartoon character on the hood. And, yeah. You know, now it's, it's all engineering, which is really yep. fascinating. So this comes in two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive, Correct, right? okay. correct. Rear-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. Which oh, it is, because most yep. electrics are front-wheel. Right. If this this is a big deal, but it's a Mustang. Right, right. And uh, we, we want to we have that kind of oversteering characteristic. Uh, we have a lot going on at Ford now. We have the Bronco coming, but we also have the F-150 electric coming. That's going to be a big launch for us, too. Yeah, so. I would imagine that. that that's going to be interesting to see, because truck people are pretty... I mean, trucks have not changed since 1918. Yeah. The only new truck I remember was the, remember the Corvair with the engine in the back? Yes. And it didn't really catch on because yeah. it didn't look like a truck. You know, truck guys, it's got to look like a truck. Well, know? we're the biggest commercial truck uh, maker in the United States and vans. I think we have 50% of the commercial market. And a lot of our customers are coming to us saying, look, we want to do the right thing. We want to go all electric. And we have a driving route that's like, you know, 200 miles, 100 miles, and we go the same route every day. And for us, you know, the electrons are going to be cheaper than gas and the maintenance is going to be less. Right. You know, it's not a huge group, but it's big enough now we can make an F-150. But it all them. comes down to pocketbook. Yes, absolutely. Because a number of people absolutely. just want to do the right thing. Yep. 
That's yeah. this much yeah. a mark. The people who I'll do the right thing if it's cheaper and better and saves me money. Yep. <laughs> that's when they do the right. And that's what it takes to succeed. Absolutely. Yeah. It's got to be better. I love what you said. You know, on the F-150, we now can um, bring power to the job site. So that truck actually can power a job site. You, if you have too much energy, you can, you can sell it back to the grid. You can power your house. You don't need a transformer or a backup generator. And the nice thing with this is once it leaves the dealership, it's pretty much gone for good, unless there's a problem with a door lock or something. Because electric just doesn't break. There's no 600-mile oil change. A lot simpler. There's no break-in. Yep. There's simpler. no nothing. You just take it out and drive yep. it as it's intended to be used. Yep. Isn't it? Well, the other thing uh, we did is we put a lot of um, a lot of American know-how on the inside. Uh, yeah, we have a great 14-inch, 15-inch display. But we developed a whole new technology experience inside which I think is, is really exceptional. I mean, it, it feels like the technology that you can find on your phone and in our normal lives are now, you know, we've caught up with it in the inside of the vehicle. Right, and I imagine if people get one of these, you gotta put the 220 in, mm -hmm. to yep. charge it, because yep. it's 24 hours if it's one. Time. Yeah, and the fast charge is now pretty fast. You, yeah. know, you can get yeah. to, uh, uh, you know, way more than 100 miles very quickly. Um, but yeah, you really do. You have and to put. And for people who say, oh, I don't want to put 220. Your house already, if you have a washer, dryer. Already you, there. You, you have yep. 220. A lot of yep. people think, oh, it's some big transformer is going to go in my garage. It's not. It's the same as putting in a, a washer or a dryer. So let me, okay, press this button open. Yep. Me, okay, now I'm told this is my key here. Correct, yep. Okay. So now you can have a regular key fob or you can use your phone, which is great. Okay. Uh, a lot of. A lot of people like that. It's a, it's kind of new for us too. Uh, you can you can unlock and lock. You can set everything you want on your phone right. before okay. uh, before you get in the vehicle, which is really nice. Um, especially, you know, we think we have a lot of customers in the northern part of the U.S. They can preheat the inside of the car. Right. If you're in Arizona, you can pre-cool it before you ever get in the vehicle. That's a big deal. We did a lot of testing. You know, not a lot of electric cars have four-wheel drive. That's a big thing for us. You know, our customers tend to be, we do very well in the northern part of the U.S. And uh, we did a lot of testing with this vehicle to make sure it performs in, you know, 20 below. Uh, we did a lot of winter testing on the vehicle. And actually, I, I think our engineers had a tough time uh, leaving the frozen lake because it was so much fun to drift. <laughs> well, that was the problem with the Nissan Leaf. It originally had the air-cooled batteries. Mm -hmm. And when it was in Arizona, yep. you, mileage yep. would be no cut bueno. in half. And Alaska, same yep. thing. Yep. Okay. So your iPhone is your key, right? Yep, that's right. And nice and simple. You got the whole display right there. Get a shot of that. So you got a grandma. Cool. I'd like to talk to you, but I got to drive right now. <laughs> Well, that's so, so everything is here. Yep, People, yep. Everybody carries their phone anyway. Yep, so. that's right. All right, very cool. Cool. Let's take a look, Jay. Yeah. So I, do I need my foot on the brake to turn it on? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, seems like a regular car. Exactly. Okay. And the first thing you'll see, Jay, is we have a center screen. Oh, look, I have my, my picture's in there. Yeah, right? that, that we set this up for you, and those are your preset audio stations, okay. at the radio stations. I hope you don't mind we picked classic rock. Classic rock works for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you hit the top left button, you'll see a little mach with the lights on. Yep, okay. hit that. Hit that. And then I'll show you. Um, so in this car, you can set the drive modes Unbrials for maximum acceleration, then whisper is for really gliding maximum range. So you know you can and you no, can. No, but that electric driving. cars don't make any noise anyway. So we designed a little noise into this. Oh, one, okay. Okay. Because uh, it's a Mustang and we gotcha. want it to All feel right. like a Mustang. So and engage means engage is kind of more like your average setting. <clears throat> okay. Whisper is if you want max range. So d default would be what engage? Yes. Okay. Yes, that's right. And then unbridles if you you want to. I don't know, escape from something. Right, okay. And uh, you Oh, you got propulsion sound here, okay. Yes, I see. Okay. And uh, we, just, we were thinking about the Jetson sounds, but we went something else. All right, and, and settings are up there. Okay. Yep. Oh, very cool. Cool. Right. Um, and valet mode means what? It locks the trunk area? Yes, okay. yes. Okay, and then you got volume center and all and that. And then uh, about six months after we launch this we'll be able to over there update a uh automation so you could drive hands-free on the highway has ford put together a charging stations the way tesla has along mm. the road How does yes that work? yes that's a great question so we have 
Uh, we have about 14,000 plugs that you can use. It's all accessible either by your phone or in the car. We have Charge America, which are chargers all across the United States, okay. and um, it, it's like the Tesla supercharging network, but it's, it, yeah, that's not an issue. Okay, also you have a center screen, which I yes. know some people don't. Yes, okay. that was, um, we tested that a lot, Jay. We were thinking about no center screen, but we got so much feedback from customers. They want just a small screen to show, you know, their speed. Well, it's annoying range. to keep doing that. Yes, you know, exactly. Okay. And, we, and they thought that was dangerous. I, we agree with them. So we put a small screen in front of them, which, which we think makes sense. You know, the thing I find interesting about electric, I've driven some uh, cars that have been converted to electric. Yes. And they've kept the transmission. Mm hmm which makes it sort of fun to drive. I drove mm -hmm. a 124 Fiat that had been Interesting. converted to electric and you could shift it, you know. Interesting. But there's really nothing to be gained. I mean, electric motor, when it's turning fast, it theoretically uses more electricity when it's turning slow, correct? Yeah. Yes. So why don't more automakers try to have a transmission almost like you get into an overdrive, mm. you know, you only need 60 horsepower to move a car down the road. Complicated, just more parts. More parts, yeah. heavier. And it's it's got to be, there's so much torque with electric. Exactly. I remember when Elon brought his experimental Roadster back 12, 14 years ago to the shop, it was the two-speed. Yeah. And I broke it. I put it in really? second and I did a bump it. and it broke. That was and it. And I went, oh man. And then they went to direct drive after that because there's so much torque going yeah. through it, you know? And uh, t to your point, I think the, the biggest leverage we have on m more range is just the way you run the regenerated brakes. Right. That's where you can really get a lot of energy in braking, moving those electric motors in reverse. And so you can actually, uh, on bridle has a very different and Whisper have a very different feel on the regenerated brakes, and that, that gives you a lot of charging. You know, Americans have this thing, when Honda came out with their new S2000 originally, it revved to 9500, it's like the first, but Americans mm. always short-shifted because they felt, oh, they're hurting it. Mm. If they, but it's meant it's to- Designed that it's, way. It's designed yep. to be screaming, that's yep. one of the, but finally they had to lower it down to, 6,500 or 7,000 mm. because Americans just couldn't. I, you know, I'm the same way on my Mustang. The red line is 8,200. I hit six and I shift. And mm. I go, you know, I got 2,000 more here. <laughs> Why don't I use it? And I yeah. do occasionally, yeah. but I'm just, it's just so conditioned. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. It's an interesting point you bring up that driving an electric car is a transition. Like when you get in the first 20, 30 miles, you've driven a lot of them. But for a lot of people driving one for the first time, it's a different experience. It's a lot quieter, but the brakes are more aggressive. You know, the regenerating brakes, you don't have to hit the brakes as much. It's a different right. experience. And your biggest problem is range, range yes. anxiety. Yes. It's such a good point. You know, our team had to build so many algorithms for that range because everyone drives differently. And so yeah. based on how they drive, we modify the range based on people's actual right. driving. A lot of electric cars don't do that. Right, so I, I use like the pizza theory. Okay. The idea that like guys will go, when they order pizza, um, give me a large one because if I get stuck on an island and it's, it's all I had to eat, you know what I mean? They just have that thing in the back of their mind. Yep. They just get the large pizza. Yeah. Really, a small one is really all you need. You're not that <laughs> yep. hungry. Yep. But what if I am hungry? <laughs> Whatever. And, and I always find with electric cars, people go, well, what if I want to What if I want to go somewhere? Yeah. You're not going to go 250 miles in a day yep. probably around yep. town. Yep. Yeah, but what if I wanted to? Well, yep. uh, yeah, you just plug it in in the afternoon. Yep. You know. It's interesting you say that because we're electrifying the F-150 and commercial customers are very different. They're like, I don't want to buy any more brad battery, well, not one mile more than I want. Their right. range anxiety is totally different because yeah. they can plan for it. Yeah, I see. I yeah. see. Because, you know, we had a Chevy Volt here for a few years, mm. and we put 90,000 miles on it, only 3,800 of it electric. I but see. since we used it just to run around the shop, every yep. time we ran an errand, we could probably plug it in. Yep. So we'd be here for three hours, oh, got to run another errand. Well, mm -hmm. I just put another 15 or 20 miles mm -hmm. on it. So mm -hmm. it's, yep. it's the same type of thing. Yep. I'm interested in this thing. All right, let's, let's take a look at it. see what we got here. Well, I want to, before we get into this, I know you told me you grew up in Buenos Aires, yes, right? Yes, yes. And you're a big there. fan of Fangio. Big time. Big well, time. Fangio gave me his 1951 World Cup. Here, take a look. It's in there. I put, I put it in this. Oh I thought you'd get a kick God, out of it. Oh, my God, Jay, that is so cool. Uh, he's my hero. Juan Manuel Fangio, world champion, 1951 for constructors. 
51. I wonder who he was racing for then. Well, you know, I always think of him as being associated with Mercedes because he had the dealership yep. in Buenos Aires yes, and he, he was did. the Mercedes distributor. Yes. But I, I'm, I want to say maybe Alpha. Was it Alpha? Cool. That shows how times change. Now you get like a $20 million contract, an yeah. airplane. Here you go. Here's a cup. Here's a cup. <laughs> yeah, get yourself a ride home. You know? <laughs> I mean, now, guys didn't make anything back in those days. Yeah. Risk their lives. Oh, yeah. Uh, guys, yep. the guys used to race for tires. Right. If this you win the race, really we'll give you cool. a set of tires. Yeah, isn't that a neat thing? That is really yeah, cool. 1951. No kidding. Now, tell us what we have here. How was this? Right. Is, it, it, is this just a sticker package of that, or is no, it totally, no. totally different? Car? So our idea was um, when, we, when we were going to come out with the Mustang Mach-E, we, we knew we wanted to kind of change the perception of electric cars. So we went to Von Gittin Jr., who's our drift champion, and he built this car. He came up with the actual concept. And the idea is, like, it can be, you know, an ass car, it could be a drift car. Uh, seven motors, 1,400 horsepower. I'm trying to figure out seven <laughs> motors, how that works. So you, uh, you have four wheels. Do you have a motor also driving another motor? Is yes. It, so yeah, they're all connected with the front differential. I think there are three in the front. Okay, so and one motor four. helps the other motor, helps the other motor. Correct, correct. Okay, I think and I it, it. And it allows it to be really tunable. So he can use it for drifting. Uh, he can use it for, uh, I, I think the, the so footage front and rear. itself. Are not connected. No, no. So, to the least. It's yep. almost as if, if this was a gas car, it would be a, like that Tornado they built in the 60s. Engine in the front, and engine, engine in the back. back. Two Correct. separate engines, exactly. but not connected. Exactly. Okay, okay. Exactly. Because it's all digital, you can tune it all. Yeah, I, I mean, it's a whole new world, isn't yep. it? It's really yep. different. And it's all copper wire, and yep. and it's really, I imagine you need really thick wires, don't you? To It's a lot of heat, a yeah. lot of heat, especially in this. You know, you see huge radiators all over the car because there's so much heat. So what's the best way to cool electric? Is it the same, basically, as cooling an internal combustion engine? Is Depends it on the water? application, but we can use oil, we can use water. Uh, with air in both cases. Well, just uh, like depends. internal combustion? It is, yeah. yep. What is it cooling? Are we co we're not cooling the wires. The wires are carrying the heat. Yeah. Are it's you usually cooling the motors the get really... Just the, the wires. Just the motors okay. get really warm. And especially for application like this, you know, where you're, you're putting so much uh, torque. Now, obviously, motors. most race cars are known for lightweight. Yep. But this is electric, so you've got batteries. Correct. Plus you've got heavy wiring. Yes. Plus you have seven. What is this? Is this about 5,000 pounds? I think that's about right, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, so it's heavy, but 1,400 horsepower we can get past a lot of that. Now, do you use some of that uh, electricity for the steering and braking and mm -hmm. other, or do you just all go to the wheels? It's a race car. No. And you've got to manhandle it. No. No, I, I think, you know, most of the electric cars now have gotten rid of hydraulically, you know, brakes and, right. and steering. Uh, now it's all electric. So is, is the motor itself water cooled? The motors are oil cooled okay. and the inverters that also get very warm are, are water cooled. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. I see. Now, most drifting involves front wheels spinning freely 
and only the rear wheel. Part. I mean, that's what it seems like. Drifting four wheel drive would be trick. Can you disconnect this? Can you freewheel the front and in, just go to the back? In or? this case, yes, it's totally tunable as a digital car. So you can drift with the front wheels, you can drift with the rear wheels, you can drift with all four wheels, which is more complicated. But uh, yeah, that's what he set it up. He wanted it to be the ultimate in tunability. You know, the fun thing about electric is, if you're a tuner, you never have to worry about emissions or because right. most people, they build right. a, a race car for the street, and yep. uh-oh, yeah. it's blowing s yep. smoke and fumes, and, and the cops don't really care if it's a race car. It's just, yep. it, it's violating uh, the law, yep. uh, environmental rules, whatever. Yep. So you could put a 1,400 horsepower on the street, nobody's going to bother you, yep. right? Because it's, yep. it's electric. Yeah. Exactly. And something to think about. And you mentioned something before, which I found interesting as a throwaway. You said crate motors for EVs where you can take your 63 Falcon and yep. make it electric if you want. You betcha, that's coming. I mean, you're yeah. starting to see that and you know, Ford will be there. Yeah, look, our, our industry is always changing. This is a very exciting change. For some people it's strange, but for other people it's exciting. Personally, for me, being in the car industry my whole life, I think this is one of the most exciting things happening. Yeah, I remember when Corvette came out with fuel injection. Ah, crazy. The, uh, guys, you bring it to the deal, they take off that fuel, throw it away, mm -hmm. and put two four barrels on mm -hmm. it. Thank you, but you know, last day is old technology, <laughs> first day is the new technology. Right, right. You know, same sort of thing. Well, yep. this has been great. Thanks for bringing all this by and showing it to us. I really appreciate it. It was fun seeing that footage of the car at Goodwood and, yep. and uh, yep. really going around. So we'll, uh, we'll have to. We're having a lot of fun at Ford, Jay. I'm really proud of our team. We have the Bronco coming out, the Mach-E, the F-150 electric coming. So a lot of good things happening at Ford yeah, and, yeah. and real car people at the company. See, and now that you're the president and everything, now you got to do all that. Uh, Jim, look at these reports, would you please? Sir, and try to say, instead of, see, instead of, see, I just get to play car. I don't have to do the report part. So <laughs> there's, there's I'll, a, I'll, I'll leave there the a lot of meetings. to you. A lot yeah, of meetings. Very cool. Very cool. Well, thanks a lot. We appreciate it. Thank you, Jay. There you go. See you guys next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>